There are lots and lots of embroidery stitches, but especially in the beginning, it is not necessary to learn them all. In this video, I will show you 10 embroidery stitches that you can use for everything you ever wanted to stitch. Line stitches are embroidery stitches that work great for outlines and letters. The following three stitches are very popular line stitches. Depending on the stitch, the line will be thicker or thinner. Backstitch is the thinnest and chain stitch the thickest of the three. The backstitch is always worked backwards. If you are using three strands of embroidery floss, like I do here, one stitch is about 5 mm or 0.2 inches long. You start one stitch length in on the marked line. For the first backstitch, you stick the needle into the beginning of the line. From now on, you always bring the needle up one stitch length behind the previous stitch. Then stick the needle into the end point of the previous stitch and repeat. The backstitch is great for any kind of lines like outlines, seams and lettering. The next one is the stamp stitch. Start at the beginning of the line. Stick the needle into the fabric about two stitch lengths away from the beginning. Bring the needle up in the middle while holding the thread loop downwards. Now pull the stitch tight to create the first stitch. For every following stitch, stick the needle into the fabric one stitch length further from the previous stitch. Hold the loop downwards. Then bring the needle up where the previous stitch ends. Repeat to the end of the stitch. Stem stitch is great for flower stems but also letters and outlines. For the chain stitch, you bring the needle up at the beginning of the line. Then stitch into the same hole or near it. Let the thread loop lay on the fabric and bring up the needle one stitch length away from the starting point. The needle should be inside of the loop. Now pull the thread tight to make the first stitch. Work every following stitch exactly the same. To end the chain stitch, make a short stitch over the last loop. Use the chain stitch for lines that should make more of an impact. You can use chain stitches to fill areas too, which brings me to the next chapter. Fill stitches are meant to fill out shapes. From flower petals to geometric patterns, everything is possible. Here are three fill stitches you can use for pretty much everything. The satin stitch is a very popular embroidery stitch for filling regular shapes. Begin on one side of the shape you want to fill out, then stitch to the other side. Now bring the needle back to the other side and stitch up. To get a good coverage, set the stitches very close to another. The difficulty is to make the stitch work very evenly. Use the satin stitch for small and medium sized shapes. The stitches must not be too long, because the thread will start to become wavy. For irregular and bigger shapes, the long and short stitch is a better option. Here you embroider the stitches offset to another. For the setup row, alternate between long and short stitch. In the following rows, all stitches are roughly the same length, but offset to another. Stitch them very densely to get good coverage of the fabric below. Since the individual stitches are not very long, you can fill shapes of any size or form. The long and short stitch is also very popular for blending colors in a realistic way in needle painting. A very simple option to fill shapes is the rice stitch. For this embroidery stitch, you make many, many stitches in different angles to another. It should look like you spilled rice on the fabric. Stitch each stitch close to another for good coverage or leave more space in between for a scattered look. Rice stitch can be used for shading. Increase or decrease the space between stitches gradually to achieve this effect. With these six stitches you can already create a lot. The last four embroidery stitches are for floral motifs. They work great together and are very popular at the moment. 
The Lazy Daisy is a very versatile flower stitch. It is worked similar to the chain stitch. Stitch up from under the fabric, then stitch down in the same place. The thread creates a loop which you let lay on the fabric. Bring the needle up a stitch length further. The needle must go through the loop. Pull the thread tight and to fixate the loop make a short stitch over it. Repeat these steps and complete the circle. The Lazy Daisy works great for flowers with smaller oblong petals like daisies, windflowers or yarrow. As you can see, you can use the Lazy Daisy for leaves too. The Woven Rose, also called Spiderweb Wheel, is another popular flower stitch. As a base, you embroider three, five or seven single stitches first. The spokes must be an odd number to work. Then bring the needle up near the middle point. Now weave over and under the stitched spokes. This way you will fill out round by round of the wheel or rows. To end the stitch, stick the needle slightly under the woven parts into the fabric. The woven rows is great for all kinds of round flowers like peonies, ranunculus and of course roses. You can find many more flower stitches in my playlist Flower Embroidery. The fishbone stitch is a universal stitch for leaves. Begin with a stitch along the middle line. Then embroider from the left side down across the middle line. This stitch should lay close to the first stitch for good coverage. Bring the needle up on the right side. Stitch down across the middle line again. Alternate stitching from left and right over the middle line. The stitches should cross over another. This creates the classic fishbone stitch look. The fishbone stitch is perfect for leaves but can also be used for petals and other shapes. The fly stitch is the second stitch that works great for leaves and twigs. Begin on the left side and stitch into the right side at the same level. Let the thread lay on the fabric and bring the needle up one stitch length further down the middle line. The needle must be inside the loop. Pull the thread tight. To fixate the loop, make a stitch along the middle line. Repeat these steps until you reach the end of the line. Make sure the stitch and the loop have the same length. The fly stitch looks similar to a twig or feathery leaves. It also works great as a fir tree or fern. With these 10 embroidery stitches you can do lots of projects. If some of these stitches are still unclear or I stitch too quickly in this video, I recommend the videos in the Stitch Lexicon here on this channel. There I explain every stitch individually and at a slower pace. Now I'm curious, which stitch do you like the best? Leave me a comment and let's see if there's a favorite. I wish you a lovely day, Anna.